Francis. Bye. Bye. Got an insanely busy day today. Meetings about New York and the recording trip that we'll be doing out of there for the new courses for SBL. We're going on meetings about the new website. We've also got a live stream going on. Yeah, so I'm good to, to push forward on the project and stuff like that. You've got a thriving community. You've got a lot of activity on that thread. It's, there's going to be no migration from one board to another board. And it's, 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 it's either keep what you've got or start yeah. again. Um, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? Uh, the things? More meetings. But some of them, what I was thinking, because it might just be like too heavy going if we get them in the studio and then rinse them for like 12 different videos. Remember, they've just flown in as well. Well, it's going to be a 10 hour day. What we've expected anyway. 10 hour day, nine, <laughs> nine days in a row. So I know it's not me that I'm bothered about, it's them. Do you know what I mean? It's them walking into a sort of like a 10 hour day. Yeah, but they're only doing one 10 hour. I'm being sat in front of the camera for like it. 10 hours. So definitely set the Zoom recorder, all the rechargeable batteries and a charger. The um, external HDs which are on order. Yeah. Where is it then? Where's the coffee shop? <laughs> the coffee shop. Where's the coffee shop? Right here. Give me coffee. Right Give me here. coffee. And this is where we're staying. You hear that? We're about to do a live stream and somebody's bolting something to the wall. Ah! Question from Joe Taylor. Question, I'm at university and one of my modules is solo performance. Is there anyone you recommend to watch? If you haven't been coming to the Facebook live stream guys, uh, we do it every Wednesday, just as a bit of a hang, hang out with the, with the base community. It's amazing, we normally get crazy numbers turning up. I think last week's was viewed something like 18,000 times within the hour, which is mind blowing. <laughs> Who knew there was that many of us in the world? Bass players like me and you gives us somewhere to connect, right? Guys, I know this sounds bizarre. I think I cursed myself earlier talking about tech and live streams. Flashback. Fingers crossed the tech works. And of flashback. We just did the live stream and essentially the tech didn't work. The live stream went out, everybody was great, but when we watched the replay of it on Facebook, it had all these crackles in the audio that weren't there when we actually did it. I don't want you guys to miss out on what I was teaching. I, I wanted to cover some cool melodic minor substitutions that you can use over a dominant chord. I had a ton of fun when I discovered these. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to record something now. I'm just going to gra grab the bass, we'll record something now, and then you can go and shed this stuff at home. Let's do it. I'm just getting this straight, guys, so you can see it. All right, check this out. So, melodic minor substitutions. This is what I was, one of the uh, questions that I was asked on the live stream. Some people seem to get a ton from it, which is why I'm recording it for you now. The gag is, over a dominant chord, right? So, and I've just got, I've got the pog on. I've got that on, just so you can hear the substitution a little bit more, because sometimes when the register is higher, it's easier to hear the substitution. I ain't got a clue why just does, right? So we're talking about substitutions over a dominant chord, and we're gonna chew, we're gonna use the F, F7, right? So. That's an F dominant seven arpeggio. Yeah, simple as. What you can do is you can use different melodic minors over the uh, any dominant but in our case the f dominant to get different substitutions now there is another way of thinking about this you could learn all of the the modes of the melodic minor which is absolutely acceptable but for me i don't know why it's sunk in this way easier but it just did okay so the first thing is just getting used used to improvising over a, a dominant chord using the mixolydian scale, right? That's a, the scale of choice for a dominant chord. Right? 
right? It's just the, the bulk standard Mixolydian scale, which is the same as a major scale, but with a flat seven. There's your flat seven. Just mixolydian. So make sure you know your mixolydian before you even start attempting any of these substitutions, otherwise things will get super crazy. So the first substitution to look at, right, is using a C melodic minor over the F7. It gives you a lydian dominant sound, right? So we've got. into this. We were looking at the C melodic minor over the F, right? Let me just show you the C melodic minor. C, oh this is any melodic minor, just remember the shape, right? So root 9 minor 3rd, natural 4, natural 5, natural 6, the sexy note, major 7, and then the octave. Now I should say there's a few different ways of thinking about this. None of them worked for me, <laughs> right? So you'll hear people say, the melodic minor is just like a major scale with a flat third. And it is, that's cool. Or you'll hear people say, it's just like a Dorian scale but with a major seven instead of a flat seven. And it is, but for me, thinking about that, that way, it just confused matters. It's not a major scale, it's a minor scale, right? Every time I play a melodic minor, I don't want to be thinking, it's a major scale with a flat third. <laughs> I don't want that process in my mind, okay? It's all right to learn it, like get it down like that, the fingering, but ultimately you need to get rid of that stuff out of your mind and understand what it is from the pure connection, it's a minor, okay? It's a minor with a major seven. So that's the melodic minor scale, and you should learn it all over the neck. If you're in the academy over at Scott Space Essence, uh, check out the harmonic layering course. It's got all of the things that you're gonna need to learn it all over the neck, right? So, what we're gonna do is we're using that over that F dominant. sounds so cool is it's got the sharp 11 in there okay so it's giving you a Lydian dominant sound to get to give it a label right giving you a Lydian dominant sound that's the first melodic minor substitution that I'd recommend that you start playing around with so just to to recap we took an F dominant and then we played the melodic minor up a fifth okay up a fifth from the root F dominant minor on top of that to give us a Lydian dominant sound. The next one, and what we're going to do is we're going to continuously think like that. Okay, that's melodic minor upper fifth. The next really cool one that I like to use is melodic minor down a tone from the root. So if we're on an F. We're going to use a melodic minor from the E flat, which is a tone down. If you, if you look at it, it gives you flat seven, 
okay? Root, flat nine, sharp nine, natural fourth, natural five, natu uh, uh, natural 13, flat seven, and then the octave, right? So it's just, again, it's giving you a flat nine and a sharp nine kind of vibe. So let's do the same thing. Let's groove over A and F. What an itchy beard. How many people with big beards get itchy beards? So we're gonna groove over an F and we're going to then start slotting in the E flat melodic minor over that tonality. Let's do this. Now, the next one that I really like to use, yep, yeah, there's two more. The next one that I really like to use, again, it's adding a bit more tension in because it starts on the natural four, is, okay, upper fourth from the root of the, the dominant, right? So on F, we're going to play a B flat. A B flat melodic minor, okay? Gives you some really cool tones. Again, let's look at the B flat melodic minor over the F and what it, how it relates. So we've got a natural four, five, natural 13, flat 13, flat seven, root, na natural nine, so we've got that natural nine, third, and then the fourth again. And it works great, okay? So here we go, two, three, four. So the next and one of the coolest ones that we're going to look at is the G flat melodic minor used over the F dominant. And in this case, we're just moving up half a step from the root, right? So half a step from the root. This is the most dissonant of all of the substitutions and it's going to give you super, super cool sound, right? So the G flat melodic minor. super Locrian sound if you want to give it a label um, but for me I just think about it as altered right Substitutions over the dominant chord. Let me just run through the ones that we've done. Over an F dominant, first of all, get your mixolydian down. Okay, get the mixolydian down. Then, a really cool one to start with is upper fifth. So, melodic minor, upper fifth from the root. So that would be C melodic minor over the F dominant. them in any, any order. I should have probably told you these in the order of dissonance, but hey ho. And then, so we've got F, we've got a down from the root, which is an E flat melodic minor. So, there's the mixolydian. That was E 
flat melodic minor with a bit of Mixolydian at the start of it. Then we go up a fourth, B flat melodic minor over the F. And then finally, let me get this right, G flat melodic minor, upper semitone. minor substitutions that you can start playing around with to get yourself into the melodic minor and the way it sounds. <sighs> Grab your axe, get into it. I'm home! Hello! Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello, all. Hello.